Today we are building our newest kit, the Interstellar Electric Skateboard Kit. This kit was released alongside our complete boards for anyone who wanted to assemble their own. The Interstellar Kit comes with everything you need to assemble your board, including all the tools you'll need. Today we're going to go through all the assembly steps and show you how to put one of these kits together yourself. The Interstellar features a 30 mile per hour top speed and 30 mile range and is completely upgradable. Let's jump into the build. When you first get your kit, you'll notice that there are multiple boxes within the main shipping box. The truck box, battery enclosure box, grip tape envelope, wheels, component box, and the deck. Before you do any building, be sure that you have all the components that are listed on your packing sheet. Once you verify that you've got everything, we can get started with the build. Find the truck box and grab the rear trucks. From the component box, you'll need the two motor mounts and the drivetrain assembly hardware. First, slide the motor mount over the axle and align the mounting holes. Secure your motor mount to the rear truck using the M5 screws and nuts. We've included all the necessary tools you'll need to complete your build in your kit, but if you do have your own tools that are better than the ones we've included, you'll save a good amount of time during the build process. In my case, I'm using my own screwdriver and wrench. Using the included Allen key and wrench, tighten the motor mounts to the rear truck. At this point, your drivetrain assembly should look like this. Next, we'll attach our motors to our motor mounts. Slide the motors through the motor mount and begin to screw them in with the M4x8 bolts. Now don't tighten them all the way quite yet, we want them to still be able to slide back and forth for right now so we can tension our belts later. And once we have both of our motors attached, we'll move on to the motor pulleys. Slide each 15T motor pulley over each motor's shaft and secure it with the M3 set screw and the included Allen wrench. Be very careful with these smaller screws while installing them, they should go in fairly easily so be patient but you don't want to miss thread anything. Next, grab the bag of bearings and the two wheel pulleys from the component box. With the help of the front truck, push the bearings into the wheel pulleys. Do the same thing for both sides of the four wheels. Then push the two pulleys into two of the wheels. Next, slide the belt over the axle and the motor pulley. Slide your wheel and pulley assembly onto the axle while turning it to slide underneath the belt, linking the wheel pulley and the motor pulley. Right away, you should notice that the belt is pretty loose. To add tension to the belt, pull the motor down the motor mount and away from the truck. Now tighten the M4x8 screws to lock the motor into place, maintaining the belt's tension. Use the included skate tool to add the axle nut back onto the rear truck. At this point, the drivetrain is done and should look like this. Now we'll move on to prepping the enclosure. We've already pre-drilled all the necessary holes, so you won't need any kind of drill. In the component box, locate the bag of enclosure hardware. It'll look something like this. The first step is to install our enclosure standoffs. To do this, we've actually included a small M4 screw with the Phillips head in the tool bag. Screw this screw into the standoff. This will give us a temporary screw head to screw the standoff in place. Slide one of the bottom bolts through the bottom of the enclosure, then begin to hand thread the standoff onto this bolt. Eventually, it should be too difficult to finish screwing the standoff in by hand. From there, we can use the Phillips head screwdriver located inside your skate tool to finish screwing the standoff all the way in. And because the bottom screw has thread locker on it and the temporary screw doesn't, we can back the temporary screw out and use it on the next standoff without loosening the bottom bolt. This process can take a good amount of time, so I usually grab a drill and a pair of pliers to get it done much faster. If you do decide to go this route, be sure to set the torque settings as low as possible so you don't damage your enclosure. Once you've installed all the standoffs, it should look like this. Next, add each of the included rubber grommets into each of the phase wire holes. This specific enclosure comes with a cable cutout for DIY builds, but in this case, we don't need it, so we'll install the gap cover to keep out as much water and dust as possible. Next, find the bag of adhesive strips. Stick three of the large strips on raised sections of the enclosure on the far side away from the cable holes. Peel the backing off of each adhesive strip. Next, drop the battery in and stick it to the adhesive. Press down firmly so it'll stay in place. Next, install your power button and charge port, and use the included nuts to secure it in place. Now it's time to install the fog box. Flip it upside down and stick the last large adhesive strip to the back. Peel the backing off and stick the fog box to the inside of the enclosure with the six phase wires facing away from the battery. Next, connect the fog box to the battery using the XT60 connector. Plug the power button cable in. Connect the charge port and battery using the red JSD connector. 
Next, we'll need to plug the receiver into the receiver cable. Make sure the V is lined up to the white cable and the five volt is lined up to the red cable. Next, stick the medium sized adhesive strip to the back of the receiver and stick it to the inside of the enclosure between the battery and the fog box. Plug the receiver connector in, followed by the two pin connector. Our enclosure is ready to be installed on our deck, but before we do that, we do need to install our grip tape and gasket. Start by peeling up a little corner of the grip tape. Fold the backing paper back, creating a small tab. Do this to both sides of the grip tape. Now we can place our grip tape without accidentally misaligning it. Once you have the grip tape sheet aligned with the deck holes, press the two small exposed areas down to the deck. This will lock in its position. Now pull the rest of the backing off and slowly lay the entire sheet on your deck. Use one of the wheels that will be going on our front truck to roll the grip tape onto the deck. Repeat the same steps for the other section of grip tape. When you're aligning the second sheet, try to get the lines as straight as you can to create as seamless of an application as possible. Once you've got the grip tape on, it should look like this. Now we'll move on to the gasket. Install the gasket with the same techniques as the grip tape. Remove a small section of the backing paper and stick down a small part of the gasket. Do the same for the opposite side. Once you have the short ends aligned, slowly remove the rest of the backing paper and stick down the longer edges. Firmly press down on the gasket to make sure the adhesive sticks. Next, push the motor cables through the grommets. It should feel like there's a pretty good amount of resistance since the grommets are just the right size. Next, plug your sensor cables in. In this case, I have my phase wires crossing so cable management is a little nicer, so I'll have to cross my sensor wires too. Be sure that the sensor wire and the phase wires are ultimately plugged into the same side of the Fox box. Next, plug your phase wires in. Order doesn't matter, just be sure to keep the groups of three separate. Now it's time to configure the Fox box settings. Uh, we've actually made a separate tutorial on how to do this. It's not very hard at all. It will take you about 15 minutes. I'll link it in the description below. After you've finished configuring the Fox box settings, it's time to install everything onto the deck. Carefully pick the enclosure and drivetrain up and flip it onto the deck. Install your riser pads and deck hardware. To allow for nearly any width of wheels, the axles are longer than usual. In this case, we don't need the longer axles, so we'll need to add a spacer to fill up some of the extra axle space. Next, carefully flip the board back over while supporting the weight of the enclosure. Using the top mount hardware, secure the enclosure to the bottom of the deck. I found that everything aligns the best when you do the front two screws first, then the back two screws, then doing every other pair down the board, finishing up the screws on a second pass. Working all in one direction or in a big circle has given me trouble before. If you find that the bottom screw is turning, as you turn your top screw, hold it in place with the Allen wrench. Next, push the nose guards on. And finally, add the motor pulley covers. And then this is something you should definitely do while setting up your fog box, but if you need to pair your remote, here are the steps to do it. Begin with the remote and the board powered off. Turn on the remote. Hold down the speed mode button and the power button at the same time. The remote will vibrate to indicate that it is in pairing mode. Immediately turn the board on and your remote should pair right away. Here are a couple of extra tips in case you run into some issues. If you're having trouble with your belts rubbing, try reversing the motor pulley. This should fix it. If you're having alignment issues, don't be afraid to add or remove speed rings. While screwing in the enclosure, applying pressure to different areas of the enclosure will reveal the standoffs within the deck screw holes if you can't see them right away. And that's it, your kit is complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any other questions, please leave them down in the description below. We're very, very active down there. Again, thank you guys for watching. Hit the subscribe button for more builds and we will see you in the next one.